Welcome back to another Crash 4 video everyone, and this one is special. Thanks to Activision, I was able to play a demo of Crash 4, I was able to get a feel for the game, and today I can show you some of the gameplay that I recorded and share a bit of info with you guys as well. So I recorded gameplay on three of the levels. We've got Snow Way Out, Dino Dash, and the Cortex Timeline version of Snow Way Out. When you're watching the gameplay, keep in mind that this is just a demo version of the game, it's not the final version of these levels or the game itself. Oh, and before I see comments like, this isn't your gameplay, I can see the PlayStation buttons at the bottom, nice try. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the first level, Snow Way Out. Snow Way Out is one of the levels that we saw in the reveal event about a month ago. It takes place in 1954, somewhere in the 11th dimension. Crash and Coco have to work their way up a mountain full of zombie fishermen to reach Cortex's lab. Now the first thing I want to say is, wow, this game looks beautiful when it comes to the art style and graphics. I mean, just look at this. Look at the background and everything. It looks so good. In this level, you get help from the quantum mass called Kapunawa, who's able to slow down time. I know we already know about this, but in the bit, where you get help from the quantum masks, Crash gets a suit and you can see the mask on his back. The masks are a big part of the gameplay when you get them and they all offer different challenges as you'll see later. Since Kapuna Wall slows down time, you'll be using that power to jump across falling platforms, activating time crates which are an interesting addition to the game. What they do is they spawn other boxes but only for a split second. You have to slow down time and do whatever it is that you need to do in the time that you have. You won't have long to do it though because you can only slow down time for a few seconds. And you best believe they made use of this feature in the bonus areas. I'll tell you what, these bonus stages are good, they're challenging for sure. One cool thing you can do with Kapunawa's power is run across nitro crates and just escape the blast in time. This bonus area is centered heavily around the time slowing ability, there's a lot of freezing time to smash boxes or to hop over nitro crates. That's the kind of stuff I think we'll be seeing quite a lot in the levels where we get to use Kapunawa's powers. And personally, I think this is a really cool idea, this is exactly what the next Crash game needed. Classic Crash Plan platforming but with something new, something to change it up a little bit. The inclusion of the masks which offer different types of platforming and the Cortex levels which have a completely different playstyle. This is exactly the kind of thing the next Crash game needed. Now I want you to pay attention to this bit because it will come back later on in the video. Um, it's like this little mini cutscene sequence. We will be coming back to this bit later on in the video. Another thing I absolutely love about these levels is that even though they're linear, they also open up a bit allowing you to go off into different directions to look for hidden gems and hidden crates and stuff. I love how they did that. Fans of the more open Crash games will definitely appreciate this. There are crates and other things that you're really gonna have to look out for because you will miss them if you're not looking everywhere. I can't explain how good it feels playing through a brand new Crash Bandicoot level. This one did not disappoint. I'll wrap up this level with the sound on and you can see the end level sequence. <laughs> Before we move on, I want to talk a little bit more about the two different game modes. If you pick modern, you'll have unlimited lives. So every time you die, you'll just respawn back to the checkpoint. You'll never get a game over screen. Instead of having a life counter at the top right, you'll just have a death counter instead. On this mode, you can get the golden Wumper crates and they count as 25 Wumper fruits. Just like smashing all of the crates, collecting all of the Wumper fruit is like a new thing that you can do in the levels. If you pick retro mode, then it's just like the originals. You get a life counter. If you lose them all, then you get a game over screen and have to restart. And the golden Wumper crates in retro mode are replaced with life crates. I think we'll talk about the Cortex timeline version of Snow Way Out next because they're both connected. In the levels where we get to play as Cortex, we'll get an alternate perspective of the level. You play in a completely unique area of the level designed for Cortex's playstyle. I just love how one of his death animations is the complete opposite of Crash's angel animation. Also, listen to this music and tell me if you've heard something like this before. Cortex's platforming is a bit different to Crash's, he can't double jump or slide or anything like that. He has a weapon which can turn enemies into platforms, either solid platforms or bouncy ones. He can turn them back into the enemy as well, which is nice in case you need to adjust the platform before making a jump. He can also dash, which will allow you to reach areas that you can't jump to. There's plenty of hidden crates in this one, I found a hidden gem too when I was dashing around at the top of the map. Cortex's controls definitely take a bit of getting used to, which makes sense because it is brand new. There were a few 
few times where I went for a double jump and just completely forgot that he can't double jump. I messed up the dashing quite a bit as well. Now at some point the level merges into the crash version that we played before and it will link to a certain event. So if you remember in Snow Way Out where the ship blows up during that cutscene, in this Cortex version we actually get to see that he was there and he did that. So the levels merge together, it's really an alternate look at the level with Cortex. When the levels merge we finish the rest of the level with Crash and even though we're going through the same area again, the level isn't exactly the same as it was the first time around you played it with Crash. Crate placements will be different which means there's new challenges when it comes to collecting all of those, more hidden crates, it freshens things up from the first time around that you played it. Now we're going to move on to the level Dino Dash, this is set in the Agapus Dimension 88 million BCB. It starts off in this jungle, visually looks amazing. The cool thing about this game's story with the Quantum Masks is that we get to go to all these different time periods and dimensions. There's going to be a huge variety of themes in this game, we've already seen gameplay from the pirate ship level and even more from the screenshots. Now in this level we get to use another quantum mask, this one is called Lanny Lolly. Lanny Lolly has the ability to phase reality pretty much, uh, you can see here I used it to collect these crates. We get a chance to try it out in action in this skate section straight after. This is another brand new addition to the Crash Bandicoot series too. Some of the hazards you're going to have to jump over while others you're going to have to phase in and out, while also making sure you phase in at the right time to get the crates as well. You probably noticed the T-Rex in the background too. I think we all know where this is going especially because we already saw it in the trailer, but yeah, this is a chasing level. Crash's facial expression changes instantly, which is one thing I forgot to speak about, but there's a lot more expression on the characters in this. Almost reminds me of like a character in a cartoon show or something. One thing I was nervous about was this game being too easy, but from what I've seen so far, that doesn't seem to be the case. Especially if you're going for all of the collectibles. Like I mentioned, collecting all of the one fruit is tough, but even tougher when you're running from a T-Rex. Just up here is another bonus stage. One one of my favourite things about this bonus stage is the dinosaurs watching Crash run around. I noticed that these levels are quite long too, I'd say they're longer than the average level from the trilogy. It might just be because I died a ton of times getting used to the controls and stuff, but even so I still think they're longer. Crash definitely feels different, his jumps feel lighter and floatier if that's even a word. It's not bad, but it's something you'll notice after playing the original trilogy. And uh, yeah, the level then finishes off with another T-Rex escape section, this time with a lot more lava involved. That's all I have to show you for today. I didn't show completely unedited footage because I just wanted to show my favorite parts of the levels, talk about a few of the new features. Again, it's just a demo. It's not the final version of these levels, but from what I've seen so far and after playing the demo, I'm very optimistic about this game. It looks good, it feels good, we've seen a bit of gameplay on other levels too, like the pirate level, and that looks fantastic. It looks promising, I'm very optimistic about this game. That being said, thank you for watching, I hope you all enjoyed. Once again, massive thanks to Activision for the demo. Let me know down below what you thought about the gameplay and if there's anything that you liked specifically. And uh, yeah, definitely subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you all in my next video.